morning. It's a warm welcome to all of you here. Welcome to God's house as we worship him today. Uh, today in worship, is a very, it's a very special day. It's, it's what we call a festival day in the church here. Uh, it's 50 days after we celebrated Jesus rising from the dead. We call that day Pentecost. And it was the day, more importantly, that God kept that, that faithful promise, that important promise that when, when he ascended into heaven, he wouldn't leave his people alone, that he would leave them this, this gift uh, called the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And today we're going to explore and unfold those promises and uh, that power from the Holy Spirit. Uh, what, what that means that we have that promise today too, that when we hear God's word, when we receive the sacrament, we have the same promise and power of the Holy Spirit in us. And a very special uh, visible uh, presentation of that power is in what we have on Confirmation Sunday, which many of you are here. Welcome to you as guests and visitors today. Thank you for being with us. As we have these four of our youths who, after studying God's word for two years, um, last Friday they had kind of a, a joyful review of, those, uh, of all that material and an uh, examination for the family and friends. Uh, but today, uh, they are very eager to come forward uh, this, this morning in our worship service and profess or confess their faith, the things that, that the Holy Spirit has been powerfully doing in their hearts. Uh, they want to share that with you uh, publicly. And the promises, the thankful promises they make to God today. And we're welcoming them as communicant members this morning, which means for the first time they will be prepared and, and uh, will receive uh, the Lord's Supper with us. So very exciting um, to welcome them into a, a fuller and a greater um, maybe a role in our congregation, uh, but also in your faith life too as you're confirmed or strengthened. So uh, we do welcome you. If you. On the way in, if you grabbed a, a service folder, that's going to be helpful. That'll kind of bring us all together as we worship our God. If you didn't get one on the way in, uh, don't be shy. You can make your way to the back. Uh, there's a stack back there. An usher can help you grab one of those. Otherwise, we do have it printed on the screens behind me as well. And finally, uh, there is a little connection card. If you don't mind me just plugging that. If at some point during the service, you could just fill out the information you feel comfortable with, and you could either put it in the offering plate or hand it to a pastor or usher. That just helps our congregation carry out its important mission for all of us to stay connected to Jesus Christ. So thank you in advance for that. Let's worship our great and glorious God together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We'll join together in using that response for Pentecost as we praise the Lord for his Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are, are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom, you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. All creatures look to you. You give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. Lord, send out your spirit, face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. And we worship him.
invite you to stand as we pray to the Lord. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. So well, today, along with our confirmation service, we're celebrating the festival of Pentecost, which again is just a word that means 50 days, 50 days after Easter. Pentecost was, just for a little context, um, was a, a very regular part of the worship service of God's people in the Old Testament. Um, very early in the wheat harvest season, when, when, when the first grain would come in, uh, they would gather together in God's house and, and give him thanks for God pouring out his abundant blessings on his people. But then, in fulfillment of God's prophecy, he took that day and he used it to teach us and give us something else. On the first Pentecost, God poured out his blessings, his greatest blessing, the Holy Spirit, to take that resurrection reality we've been talking about for the past seven weeks and implant that seed in our hearts for an abundant harvest. And so, notice this in all of our readings today. Notice the Holy Spirit at work with power across the world, but in individual hearts. That when you hear the word, it's not just stories and myths. It is the power of God to save, uh, save people like you and me. So our first reading is from the Old Testament where the prophet Ezekiel, uh, he has a very special vision of what God would do through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word of God. Ezekiel wrote, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a, a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them. Skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to it, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. And they came to life, and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia. We pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. In our second reading today, we have the, uh, the, the prophecy of Pentecost, which was back in the Old Testament, God promised when Jesus suffers and dies and rises again, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to take that truth and spread it like fire over the world and in people's hearts. And in Acts chapter 2, we have the fulfillment of that prophecy in a very powerful and real way as God's believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then to show this, uh, some miraculous signs were accompanied by that, as you'll see here too. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. And we praise the Lord with the words of our next song.
Please stand for today's gospel reading. Our lesson today from John's gospel in chapter 15 and 16. Jesus says, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, well, I guess this is good news. I, a few weeks ago, I was sitting in my living room and I saw this bird come flying up towards the house. It disappeared for a second and then I saw it fly away. And then a few minutes later, I saw this bird come flying up to my house. It disappeared and in a few seconds, it flew away. And so I went outside to investigate what was going on and it looked something like this. The robins in the area decided that my light fixture was the perfect place to set up shop and start a family. Squatters. <laughs> but if everything goes well, in just a few weeks, I'm going to be a grandpa. <laughs> now, I was reading a little bit about robins and came to find out that that process goes by very quickly. Within 14 to 16 days, they says they fledge from the nest. They'll stay with their parents uh, maybe three weeks, and then after that, they're pretty much all on their own. They're young, but they grow up so quickly. And then they're off. <laughs> so quickly. You know, this is the season of the year when colleges are having commencements and, and soon high schools will be hosting graduation exercises. It all goes so quickly. And even today here at St. John's, we're hosting a confirmation service and confirmation is not graduation. You told us that very clearly the other day. But it is a change. It is a step forward as young people receive more privileges and also take on more responsibilities for their own spiritual care, for their own spiritual growth. And then the question is, what kinds of things, after you're confirmed, will you participate in in the church? And how will you continue to stay close to your Savior? It's an exciting day. It's an ominous day. But it reminds us a bit of this lesson that we are going to consider this morning from John's Gospel. This section we've been reading for the last couple of weeks where Jesus is meeting with his disciples in that upper room where he's about to leave and about to edge them out of the nest. We'll consider that today as we think about all of ourselves confirmed now or in the future, but leaving and going out of the nest to serve our Lord. So we'll consider that this morning. Let's just set the context of this section. You remember that this section from John chapter 13 to John 17 is when Jesus is meeting with his disciples in that upper room. 
just hours before he's arrested and soon to be put on the cross to die for the sins of the whole world. And in one simple statement, Jesus lays out really the tone or the feeling of the moment. He says this, You are filled with grief. Why would he say such a thing? Well, he says it's because of the things I just told you. Jesus had just told them that things were going to get more difficult for them. And not just physically speaking, but spiritually speaking too. That they were going to be confronting the devil and all of his tricks. And he just said, I am going to the Father. So Jesus is going to be physically leaving them. And as a result, he says, they're filled with grief. We can understand that. But Jesus has some words of encouragement for them because right after that he says, this is for your good and I'm going to send you the counselor. It sounds strange to think that Jesus is with them and now he's leaving And now they're, in a sense, on their own. They're getting edged out of the nest. And how are they going to handle that? But Jesus says, this is for your good. Because I'm going to send you the counselor. That is, Jesus leaves, someone else is going to come to take his place. Jesus refers to this person as the counselor. That word counselor comes from the Greek language. That Greek word is parakletos. Um, It's actually two little Greek words put together. I put a separation in them so you can see the difference. The word para reminds us of, in math class, two lines that run next to each other. We call them parallel lines, right, alongside of one another. And then the verb kaleo in Greek is the word to call. And he says the counselor is the one who is called to your side. Jesus is leaving, but someone is coming to take his place. We can understand that, right? Maybe sometime this year, you were not feeling good during those cold months of the season. Maybe you got a cough or a runny nose. You had a fever. What did you do? You called your mom. You called your dad and said, I need some help. And what did your parents do? What did they say? They said, I'm not coming in there. You're sick. <laughs> no, they came to your side, right? They came to your side to help you out. Throughout the course of our lives, we go through these kinds of things, these difficulties, right? Where we might have a really hard day or have a, a big disappointment. We get on our phones. We text somebody. We call them. We say, you got to get over here. I need you to be here, right? We call someone to be at our side to help us. Jesus said, I'm going to send someone to be at your side, but it isn't just a friend or family member. He says, it's the Holy Spirit. Think about that. God, the Holy Spirit, comes to people. What an amazing thing. The Apostle Paul said the very thing in 1 Corinthians, right? He said, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. What an amazing thing that sinful people would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But that's exactly what Jesus was doing. He was leaving, but the Holy Spirit was coming to take his place. But the focus of Jesus' words today aren't so much on the presence of the Holy Spirit, but on the power of the Holy Spirit And what the Holy Spirit will do. And so Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, he will testify about me. The word testify means to like give a witness. The Holy Spirit is going to come and remind the disciples of who Jesus is and what he did. And we know how the Holy Spirit does that. He does it in his word, right? That as the disciples would remember the word of God, as the Holy Spirit would give them the word of God, they would remember who Jesus is and what he did for them. 
Especially what he says at the end of that section, that the prince of this world stands condemned. He's talking about the devil. They're going to be battling the devil. But Jesus says, remember, he's condemned. I've won. And you belong to me. You know, the the Holy Spirit is still doing the same thing today. When we think about our young people growing up, getting confirmed, graduating and moving on, getting out of the nest, it sort of maybe fills us with a little bit of grief too, or at least some questions. But it's the same Holy Spirit who has been unleashed and sent out into the world who comes also to his people. And he's just, just as Jesus said, he will testify about me. It's the same Holy Spirit who testifies or speaks to us today. For all the times that you think about in life, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't handle that real well. I should have never said that to my brother or sister or to my parents had some thoughts that shouldn't be there in my mind. It's the Holy Spirit that still speaks to us today. And he still reminds us that for all of our lacks and failings and sins, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus has conquered the devil. You need to remember that. Because otherwise the devil just keeps accusing you over and over again and reminding you of your failings and flaws. It says the Holy Spirit speaks to you. That's the strength we have when we leave the nest, when we send our children out of the nest. <laughs> that they don't go alone, but the Holy Spirit comes alongside. It's not just that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we find out an amazing thing that the Holy Spirit is also going to do, and that's to speak through us. He said to his disciples, you must also testify. And that becomes very, very clear on Pentecost. As the Holy Spirit manifests himself in those tongues of fire, in the sound of the wind, in the foreign languages that they can amazingly and suddenly speak, he is sending out the disciples to make a difference in the world, to be an influence, to speak the truth. The Holy Spirit is still doing that today. Jesus has sent out, unleashed the Holy Spirit in the world And today, not only does the Spirit speak to us, but the Spirit speaks through us. What an amazing thing. When you look out into the world today, you recognize and hear all the problems, all the troubles. What our world needs is a a generation of young people who know where they stand and who stand where God has called them to be. And who aren't afraid to stand out or to stand up and to speak the truth and to be a witness of the good things that God has done. That's how he works. He speaks to us and then he speaks through us. After the service today, take a second and look through your worship folder today. These four have written some pretty neat essays sharing their faith, their spirit-filled faith with us. What a joy to know that we have a new generation of people who know and love their Savior. What are some thoughts for us to consider this week as we are sent out of the nest? Well, the first part is is it's kind of nice to stay in the nest, right? You'd rather just stay there, not go anywhere. Because Jesus reminds us that The world separate from him is filled with grief. We see that all the time. We see the problems. There's so many problems, who could ever solve them all? 
And, and that idea of trying to live life without Jesus, it, it sounds very empty and, and very hard. And, and that's why he says this. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. <laughs> and how does he do it? He does it in his word. That's why pastors are always saying things like this. Keep coming to church. Keep taking the Lord's Supper, Jesus' body and blood. Grab a meditations book and read it every day. Put your Bible by your bed. Join youth group. Go to Bible study. Listen to Christian music. Surround yourself with friends who will encourage you in your faith. Surround yourself because that's the way the Holy Spirit works. He works through the Word. As we listen to the Word of God in our lives, as we commit ourselves to not just hearing it, but believing what He says, the Holy Spirit works in the lives of of people of all ages to help us with the grief to deal with the devil and to stand firm in a world that's just blowing every which way. And once the Holy Spirit speaks to you, then his bigger goal is to speak through you. That in a troubled, darkened, and dying world, there is a voice of hope, of love, of of forgiveness. And this is how the Holy Spirit works. He works through people. 2,000 years ago, he sent out the disciples. Today he sends out us to give hope and encouragement to those who have none. To strengthen each other. A couple weeks ago I received a letter from a a young man I've known for many, many years. He wrote to me to tell me about some of his life plans. And it was just interesting to see how God's word was still an important part of his life even after high school, that that was a significant thing that was driving his decisions. We need more and more people like that who commit themselves to the Word of God and take it seriously and strive to live it out in their lives. Not because they're perfect, but because they have a Savior who's perfect, who loves them. The Holy Spirit speaks to you Because he wants to speak through you to make a difference in the world. There's a little part of us that wants to stay in the nest. (laughs) But it's Jesus by his power that urges us to go out. To make a difference in the world. Well, a few hours ago, those gowns looked something like that. Now they're being worn. They're all white. Only one of them is partially ripped. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) There's a part of me that wants you to think about the significance of those robes. They're white. (laughs) They're white robes because they picture what Jesus did in your baptism when he washed away your sins. They're white because they remind us of the white robes of Jesus' righteousness. There is a part of me that says, I want you to take those home and put them on every single day. Except that we need them next year for next year's class, so you can't do that. Jesus reminds us that we are clothed every day in his righteousness and holiness because of what he has done for us. We need to put that on every day. There's so many dangers out there. But the power of Jesus goes with us. And so, today, go with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been unleashed from his nest. He fills the world with the word of God. 
Through that, he works in the hearts of people of all ages to lead them to faith. He speaks to you because he wants to speak through you. May you fulfill his purposes in your life. Out of the nest. Amen. May the peace of God which passes our human understanding guard our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Invite the congregation to please stand. And we will join now to confess our faith. We'll use this confession that's based on the work of the Holy Spirit. It's on page 8 and also on the screens behind me. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. And in the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. Our service continues now with the offering. You may also put those little uh, connection cards in the offering plate as well. At this time in our worship service, I would invite our youth who are going to be confirmed to step forward.
My dear young friends, when you were baptized, your gracious Lord forgave all your sins and covered you with a robe of Christ's righteousness. Through water and the word, he created faith in your hearts and adopted you into the family of believers. As you matured and heard and studied the scriptures, the Holy Spirit enlightened your minds and preserved you as a child of God. Now you have expressed the desire to confess these truths that you believe before your Savior and your family and friends today. You are ready to say with the Apostle Paul, I believed, therefore I have spoken. You have learned to examine your thoughts, words, and actions in the light of God's word and his law. And you have experienced the comfort of forgiveness in the Savior's gospel. With this preparation, you are eager to receive the Savior's body and blood in the sacrament. As we worship with you on this day, we are, are filled with joy as we see how the Lord has grown your faith and your love. We are bringing our prayers to the Savior's throne of grace and, and imploring him to keep you faithful to him and his word until you join us and all believers in the glories of heaven one day. But now I ask each of you and all of you, are you ready and willing to confess your faith before the triune God and those who are worshiping with you today? If so, answer, I am. Do you believe in God the Father? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I do. Do you reject the devil along with all his lies and his empty promises? If so, answer, I do reject him. Do you believe that all the books of the Bible are the inspired and inerrant word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teachings of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you've learned them through our confirmation studies in Luther's small catechism, are faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. Is it your sincere prayer and your desire to remain faithful to your Lord Jesus and his word all the days of your life? If so, answer, yes, and I ask God to help me. Is it your sincere prayer and desire to live a life that pleases God, to value his word and sacraments, and, as pastor said, to witness to your Savior wherever you go? If so, answer, yes, and I ask God to help me. Friends in Christ, the word of God urges us to pray for one another and especially for the youth of our church on this special day, it is very fitting that we bring our prayers before God, firmly believing that he alone is able to strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit and then to keep us faithful to the Savior until we die. So let us pray. Gracious Father, in holy baptism, you created faith in the hearts of these young people. And you gave them a new birth as members of your family. Help them remember their baptisms every day and to find comfort in your promise that you will never leave them or forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And give them strength to put down and to drown that sinful nature that lives within them so that each day their faith may triumph in their living and their loving and their words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lead them to see and believe that in the word of the gospel, they find forgiveness for their sins and relief for their guilt. Use the remembrance of your commandments to drive them to the comfort of the gospel and then to guide them as they thankfully live for you and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and protect them from Satan when he tempts them to be careless with your word and sacrament or to make plans for this life 
and not for the life to come. Or to find popular theories about life more appealing than your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And empower them by the gospel of your son Jesus to live in their world with kindness and humility and patience that others may see their good works and glorify their Father in heaven. And help us provide fitting examples of faithfulness to your word and sacraments for them. Lead us to encourage and admonish them in wisdom and love even after they've left our homes and made new nests for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And when the end comes, when we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Lord, have compassion on us despite our sins. Accept us as eternal dwellers in your royal rooms through the merits of Jesus, our Savior, who became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I now invite each of you to come forward individually and receive a special blessing and a word of encouragement from your Savior from the Scriptures. Maya, you chose as your confirmation verse Joshua 1, chapter 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Not chapter 9, that'd be a long confirmation verse. Um, where it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. Ryan, you chose John chapter 8, verse 12 as your confirmation verse. I hear this powerful promise now. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your heart and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Jason, you chose these beautiful words from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, about God's love and adopting us into his family. For he chose us in him, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. The Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Renew and increase in you the gift of the Holy Spirit for your strengthening in faith, your growth in grace, your patience in suffering, and for the blessed hope of eternal life. And Oliver, you chose Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Beautiful promises and words from God. And the God of peace sanctify you through and through and keep you blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maya, Brian, Jason, Oliver, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.
be seated. And we continue again with prayer. Blessed and gracious Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, you proceed from the Father and the Son, and together with the Father and the Son, we worship and glorify you. On this holy and precious day, so soon after our Lord ascended to his throne in glory, you, Holy Spirit, descended among his joyous followers with your holy wind and igniting fire. You opened their eyes to see with clarity and completeness the good news, just as Jesus promised you would. And then you strengthened their hearts and their ministry in sight of the whole world and conferred on them special gifts and courage to be the witnesses you've called them to be, just as you've called us to be. Now we ask you to pour out your power on us again, dear Spirit. Ignite our minds and hearts to find our purpose in proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ. And when success seems scarce in that endeavor, console us with the gentle, quiet whisper of your word. And when some will listen, open up our lips to speak the truth in love. And when enemies attack, defend us, not with the edge of the sword, but with the power of the gospel. What we pray for ourselves, we pray for the whole church, and especially those who are being confirmed today, Lord. Good Shepherd, we thank you for your love and concern for each of your precious lambs, and we thank you especially today for our youth being confirmed and being blessed uh, with the opportunity to come forward now to receive the Lord's Supper. Continue to be with them and to enlighten them with your gospel. Thank you for providing them with parents and friends and family and grandparents and Sunday school teachers and pastors, tools of which you draw them closer to you. Lord, we ask you to continue to use all these gifts and keep them close to you now and forever. Remind them every day of their baptisms so they never forget that they have received an inheritance that will never perish or spoil or fade. And enable them to use the lessons they've learned to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose name we also join together and pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day kept his promise and poured out the Holy Spirit to empower his church, to proclaim the gospel in all the world. Therefore, with believing and repentant hearts, we offer humble thanks and praise as we hear again your promises in this supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given you to death for your sins.
This morning, having gathered together in God's house and through the promise that the Holy Spirit uh, powerfully was poured out upon us through the good news of Jesus, we all have reason to speak these words from our hearts. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated as we conclude our worship this morning with that, that final hymn, that final prayer that God in all things will hold us fast as we hold to him.
Just another opportunity to say good morning, everyone. It's a warm welcome to all of you here today. I see a lot of new friendly faces with us. It's just really a joy you could be here with us, uh, especially a good morning and a, a warm welcome as uh, communicant members, Maya, Brian, Jason, and Oliver. Uh, it's been a, a joy for Pastor and I to study with you these past two years and will be a joy as we continue to grow in our faith together. But you'll have the opportunity to say hello and greet them and encourage them. They'll be in the back uh, in, in the receiving line. And then we have just some, some cake and coffee, too. We'd like to extend that time of encouragement and fellowship together. So uh, before you jet off, just, just join us for a little while this morning. Um, also, uh, you will be very blessed if you take your service folder and you take that home with you today. Because on the back two pages, you will see uh, the beautiful evidence of the Holy Spirit poured out in each of these individuals' hearts. They wrote just a personal essay. Uh, just, they wanted just to public, publicly uh, share uh, what the Holy Spirit's privately been doing in their hearts these past years. And so again, just take that service folder home with you. Read their confessions of faith. God will bless you through that too. So thank you for doing that for us too. God's rich blessings to all of you. Uh, our prayer is that he'll lead us back here together very soon. Uh, to do this very same thing is just rejoice and celebrate in his love together. Have a blessed day in the Lord.